Welcome to this practice. A simple beginner's practice. A lot of it will be on the floor, so lots of support to make sure that we're really well aligned. And we'll be using a blanket and a strap. So gathering that equipment, and let's come back and meet on the mat. We've got the strap handy, and with our blanket, let's fold it up to make a kind of thick wedge, which we're now going to sit on. Starting in Sukhasan, with the right hand across the front of the left. Wiggling around, and then with your hands, reach for the buttocks and widen them apart two times. And then when you sit, you'll be connecting with a much broader base and importantly, the idea of the left buttock, the left hip, the right buttock, the right hip. So starting to become sensitive to dissecting the body, if you will, so that we can refine it. The hands on the thighs, the elbows back so that the chest is open and closing the eyes. Soft, smooth inhalations and exhalations. And with the breath, start to feel the inner body. Bringing it spaciousness and freedom. And with each exhale, relax all of the tension, mental, physical. Just keep letting it go with each exhale. Let the mind become more and more simple. And then lifting the hands and pressing the palms together in front of the chest. Opening our practice with one more. Inhale. your knees, coming forward to your mudrasan, the hands looking forward, look at the arms to make sure that they're straight, the elbows aren't bent, and then lower the head so the back of the neck is long, breathing, See if the hands could walk further forward. Check with your eyes that the arms are still straight. back in and changing the cross of the ankles. Coming forward again to Yoga Mudrasana. So place the fingertips on the mat, straighten the arms and now check your shoulders, make sure they're not hunching up to the ears. Move them down, broaden them and begin to walk the hands forward. Push into your fingertips to push the hips back. So you're coming forward, the trunk is coming forward but you're pushing into the fingertips, energizing the arms to push the hips back and that grounds the pose. And once you've checked all of those little details that make the pose, lower the head, the back of the neck long and stay connected to those adjustments from inside. Feeling the pose in a new way as you breathe.
See if the hands can reach further forward towards the front of the mat. Make sure the shoulders are moving away from the ears, the right shoulders to the right, the left to the left. back in and undoing the ankles, the feet. Let's move this mat to the side, and this blanket to the side and come to Vajrasana, kneeling pose. So of course, taking any pattern, if you want to put the blanket underneath your knees and shins, just hit pause on me, adjust that, and then join in. The knees a little bit spread. We want the thighs to receive, to hold our front ribs as we come forward. So place your hands on your front ribs and lift them up. Breathe into them, bring spaciousness there. And then exhale forward. Keep pulling the ribs up so you're not letting the abdomen area get tight and small. And place the ribs on the front thighs as if the front thighs were ladders. And you're trying to get the ribs up the ladder of the front thigh towards the knee. And then stretch the arms, fingertips down. Arms vibrant, don't let the elbows bend. Keep the shoulders broad, and then as you walk the fingertips forward, lower the head down, Yoga Mudrasana Vajrasana. Deep inhalations and exhalations. Keep activizing the arms and pressing the fingertips down to push the hips back. And then looking up and walking the hands back in and releasing. All right, lying down on our backs. The strap is handy for when we need it at some point soon. Not quite yet. Knees to the chest. So this is the upside down version of the pose that we just did. Line your inner feet up carefully. If there's any kind of disalignment here, it's going to travel up the legs and into your hips. So we want to start to get the hips and the spine aligned. We want to make sure that we start from our feet. Inner big toes lined up, inner heels lined up, arches of the feet lined up, and then pull the outer edges of the feet right here back. That's it. And then interlock the fingers around the fronts of the knees. And reconnect with breath, fullness of breath. And that breath bringing spaciousness inside. and then feet to the floor. All right, we're going to do the one-legged version of this. So now the right knee coming towards you, lifting up and locking the fingers, and coming back down, bringing that right thigh closer and closer to the right side of the front trunk. And filling the pose with breath. Exhale, releasing all tension. Think of it as lubricating the inner body with this pranic oxygenation. And then the right foot to the floor, make sure it's facing straight forward, not turning out. And the left leg towards us, interlock the fingers. And draw the left thigh towards the left front trunk. Lengthen the inhale, lengthen the 
exhale, make the breath meaningful. Releasing at the feet to the floor. And now we're going to stretch the legs straight and line our inner feet up again really precisely and pull the toes back and pull the outer edges of the feet towards the outer hips. Keep the heels firm. So the legs are actually working, even though it looks as if we're not doing much. And now we're going to bend the right knee towards us, keeping the left leg as it is. Interlock our fingers. Ekapada Sutta Pavanutasan, full pose. Just lift the head up, check the left leg, make sure it hasn't rolled open. If it has, roll it back in, heel down, toes back. Full deep inhalations and exhalations. Releasing that right leg, re-extending, joining the inner feet, pressing the heels down, toes back, and now bend the left leg, ikapana on the left hand side, making sure that that right leg stays vibrant, firm, and rolling in so the kneecap faces the sky. Re-relax the shoulders if they're holding any effort or tension. The breath fluid. And then releasing and foot to the floor, bending both legs again. The feet facing forward. Check that your lower back isn't lifting off the mat. Make sure the pelvis is tilted so that the entire arch of the lower back is connecting to the ground. Just feeling that, breathing. And now taking the strap, holding it, bending the right leg, lifting ourselves up, and placing the strap on the arch of the foot. Pull the toes back. Lay back down. Begin to straighten the leg. And with your hands, pull the strap back. So create resistance between the foot and the strap. Keep trying to open the back of that knee. Keep pulling with the hands and pushing with the foot against the strap. Then bending the leg and foot to the floor, make sure it's facing forward, left leg, lifting up, strap on the arch, pull the toes back, hold firmly with your hands and extend and push with the foot against the strap as we pull back. Deepen the breath, lengthen the breath. Keep tightening that knee, opening the back of the knee.
and then bending the leg and the foot to the floor. Both legs straight again. Line the inner feet up, press the heels down, roll both thighs in, laying back down. Now tilt the pelvis. So move the buttocks towards the heels so that the lower back is closer to the ground. Feel that. Breathe. And now keep the left leg as it is, bend the right leg, lift up, put the strap on the arch of the foot, hands holding firmly and straighten that leg. Sutta Paramusha Sanborn. Make sure that left thigh on the floor is still rolling in, the heel is pressing down. The toes on both of your feet are pulling back, the knees are firm. See what's happening in the lower back area. If it's arching up, what can you do to get it to press down more towards the mat? And the leg coming closer and closer. And then releasing. And straightening the leg, joining the inner feet up. Heels firm, legs firm. Lift the buttocks and your hands, move them towards the heels so the lower back gets closer to the floor. Left leg, lifting up. Strap on the arch of the foot and extending. Pull with the hands and push with the foot. Feel your right leg with your inner senses. Is the heel still firm? Are the toes still spread? Is the right thigh still rolling in? And draw that left leg closer, really opening the back of the leg, pulling the toes down, pulling with your hands. A little bit closer, a little bit closer. And then coming back up and releasing. Feet together, lined up, heels firm. Now bending the right leg, a variation of the same pose. Lifting up, placing the strap on the arch of the foot. And then the left hand is going to hold both straps. Extend your right arm out to the side so it's in line with the shoulder, not higher and not lower, really in line with the shoulder. Straighten your knees. Now let your left leg that we've been worked so hard to keep active in the other poses, here I want you to let it roll open. And now bring the right leg towards you and to the left, towards you to the left, the back right hip is lifting off the mat. So you can turn and twist. Keep pulling the toes of the right foot back, keeping that leg active, the back of the knee open. Breathing, the shoulders rolling back so the face is relaxed. And now turn the head to the right, away from the leg so that the abdomen can twist also to the right, following the head, following that right arm. Breathing. Twisting.
and then bringing that leg back up and releasing and lining the feet up. Heels pressing down. Be here, feel. And now for the left side, so we're lifting the left leg up and placing the strap on the arch of the foot and straightening the leg as best as we can. The hands are pulling. And then we lift, we make sure that this right leg, we allow it to roll open here. Now the hand, the right hand holds both of the straps. Pull, don't let this knee bend, it loves to bend. And extend the left arm so that the hand is in line with the left shoulder. Bring in the left leg towards you and to the right. Towards you and to the right, coming down in increments until the elbow can support you. The hip, of course, is lifting, otherwise we can't get the leg over. Keep pulling the toes of the left foot back and keep the back of the knee open. Now turn the head to the left. And with each exhale, turn the abdomen also to the left. Let the inhale fill the body, these new spaces being revealed. Let the exhale help you to turn and twist and release tension always. And then bringing the leg back up and releasing, bending the knee and both knees bending the feet parallel, feet on the floor. Make sure the lower back is reconnecting to the ground if it lifted up. Right, both legs at the same time, so bend the knees towards us, lifting ourselves up and place the strap on the arch of the foot, pull the toes back. Remember the outer edges of the feet want to learn to come towards the outer hips. Now let's begin to straighten the legs. The hands pulling firmly. We're pushing up through the feet, pulling the toes back, looking at our feet, making sure they're lined up, the inner feet, looking at our knees. Could they be straighter? Pulling with our hands and feeling how when we pull with the hands, it travels down the legs to the root of the thigh, the root of the femur bone, and it draws it into the hips. So we feel the left back hip and the right back hip really pressing onto the mat. Make that pressure even. And now make sure the shoulders are rolling back. Relax the face, but keep the legs firm. The hands pulling, the feet pushing. And the back hips pressing to the mat. And now bending the knees, letting go of the strap, interlocking the fingers around the fronts of the knees, the shins. Let the groins be soft, the abdomen be soft, breathe, relax. And then bring the feet to the floor and rolling over. Taking that blanket and just having it handy. Moving the strap and lying back down. 
Just hang your blanket there so you can reach for it when you want it. Re-extending the legs and widening the feet so that there, each heel is lined up with the corner of the mat. The right heel to the right corner, the left heel to the left corner. Press into your heels, lift your buttocks up and manually move the buttocks towards the heels so that when you're lying down, your lumbar, the arch of the spine, is moving towards the mat. And now extend the right arm above, going to the right, and the left arm above, going to the left. Feeling that star shape. Extending into it, breathing. And then release the arms to the side and let the legs roll open. And now let's do just the right side. So roll the right thigh in, heel down. Extend the right arm. And stretch the right side of the body. See if you can move the heel even further away. Press it down to pull. Stretch the right arm. And then releasing. And the left side, roll the left thigh in, press the heel down. Extend the left arm. And stretch the left side. See if the left heel can move further away, press it down. And from there, stretch the left arm. And then releasing. And now let's do the left leg and the right arm. So roll the left thigh in, press the heel down. That's anchoring us as we stretch the right arm. And find that line, that diagonal line there. The left heel pressing down as the right arm stretches. And releasing. And now rolling the right thigh in so the heel is pressing down and extending the left arm. See if that heel can go a little bit further, repress it. And from that, re stretch the left arm, breathe. How does this feel compared to the other side? Can you access it in the same way? Feel with the breath. And all four, last time, roll the thighs in, keep the feet apart, the heels pressing down, the buttocks moving towards the heels, so the lower back is moving towards the ground, and then the arms apart, star shape, spread the fingers, spread the palms, spread the toes, and extend and radiate in all directions. Feel the ribcage stretching, the intercostal muscles stretching. The lungs broadening. And then releasing. And the blanket is right there, so we can just reach for it and place it underneath the neck and the head. And then our strap is just on the side. And we're going to make a little loop in the buckle, or you can just tie it around your legs, and you're putting your legs through, and you're just tightening up there so it's going to hold the knees together so that we can relax. As you place your feet down, spread the feet the width of the mat, but turn the toes in a little bit towards each other, so a little bit of a knock lead action, and this is going to help the knees really be together. And then just press into your feet, lift the hips, and tilt the pelvis so that the lower back 
is an arching or straining unconsciously as we rest. Make sure everything feels comfortable, adjust your feet and then forward or backwards to make sure that you're really feeling that comfort, that connection in the lower back, that support of the blanket underneath the neck and head. And then extend the arms diagonally out to the side, the palms open to the sky. The shoulders roll back so that the lungs, the chest, the heart are open. And then the eyelids closing, resting here, Shavasana. Bending the elbows, lifting the hands up and gently resting them on the top of the pubic bone, the lower abdomen. Now then the eyelids opening. And welcome back. So let's just take the strap off our legs. Really important as we come out of Shavasana to not just roll up, which will re-grip all the abdomen, we want to come out in softness. So rolling over to the right, using the hands to push yourselves back up. And here we are. Our practice is complete. I hope you enjoyed these gentle supportive openings that they ignited not only new areas but also new cellular intelligence and if you just keep coming back to these basic stretches in a week you'll already see such a transformation namaste <laughs>